Hi everybody. When working with the canvas, what we're dealing with are not mathematical operations, are not vector graphics. What we're dealing with are straight up pixels. And what this means is that we need to take some special care to make sure that our visuals appear properly when viewed on high DPI screens, something that doesn't happen by default. So let's take a look at what is involved here. So at a high level, I'm pretty sure you and everyone you know will agree that what we want are visuals that are crisp and sharp, what we have on the right-hand side. If something looks blurry, something looks pixelated, something looks odd, that doesn't really give you a feeling that what is being developed or being created is of high quality. You don't want that. You know, definitely want something that is really sharp, really nicely presented for the device you're currently on. And here's the challenge. When we're building things on the canvas by default, what we draw, the pixels we paint on screen, are usually created with a default DPI of 72. And that is great for a lot of screens out there. For the longest time, probably for decades, that was a great resolution, great DPI to target. But the problem is that nowadays, our screens are far more capable. When we view our content or our canvas content on a high DPI screen, like those found on our phones or retina displays or the new cool 4K, 5K, 8K screens you see everywhere, center DPI, that just won't cut it. What we really need is a way to require more pixels than what the original image is made up of. And you can kind of imagine where I'm going to here where you have an image with fewer pixels that is now being blown up to display in a larger area. And what our computers do, what Canvas does, and what our browsers do oftentimes is when there's a lack of pixels to make up for these missing pixels, our browsers tend to automatically fix things. They go out of their way by doing the equivalent of scaling the image up. What you get is something like this. You have a small image at its original size, but because now it's being asked to display in a much larger area, at least with more pixels involved, that same image is being asked to be much larger. And what you get is essentially a blurry pixelated image at best, something pretty much unusable most of the time. And so the solution is this. There's a technique that is commonly used in image processing and with what we're going to be using called downsampling. And what we do in downsampling is really that we're going to generate our visuals at a much larger size than what we need to initially display it, one that matches the higher DPI, and then we scale our image down to ensure that it appears physically for the size we intend for it to. So it's a, it's kind of like you, you, we fake the extra pixels by making the image itself larger from the very beginning, and then we make it smaller to fit the, the 800 pixels or 500 pixels, or whatever width and height that we precisely want our element to be. So to focus on how we do that with the canvas, there are three steps, there are three ways you can break it down. The first is to figure out by how much we want to scale our visuals by to match the, the DPI setting, the scale factor. And once we have that value, the next step is to physically increase the size of our canvas by that scale amount and ensure all the drawing operations that are happening occur at this larger size. And then the last step is really to, now that we have our much larger image, is to scale and squish it back down to its original smaller size so that we get the, the nice crisp image at the size we want without having to deal with something extremely large. So for the rest of it, if you want to follow along, you know, here's a link bit.ly slash high DPI canvas. I'm going to code along with you. I'm going to go ahead and jump into code editor right now. And let's see how this goes. So here's the same exact code pen that I have loaded in my browser. And you can see that what I have here is a very simple example of a canvas image where I'm drawing a circle, a green circle with the darker green border. And I'm not sure how clear it is to see in the actual screen right now, but you can see that the circle is not very crisp. You can see there's some like pixelation at the edges. It looks a little bit rough. So the three steps we talked about earlier, we try to figure out what the scale factor is, make the image larger, and then use CSS to squish it back down. Let's go and implement those three things in code. So the first thing I want to do is figure out what is the current size of our canvas in the first place. And the way to do that is by using a handy method called get bounding client rect. So I'm typing in let rect equals canvas dot get bounding client rect. And once I have this, I essentially get an object with four properties for the, the various sizes, the width, the, the height, the, and all these things. But I don't need that right now though. What I really need is I just need a way to increase the, the width and height of our canvas using these values. So canvas dot width equals the rectangle dot width times a property called the device pixel ratio. And this is the one that gives us the DPI value 
that is critical for what we're trying to do. So you can see canvas dot height equals rect dot height times device pixel ratio again. And notice that at this point, what we have here is an image that is just absolutely massive. Like, look at this. It's like, you know, several times larger. I am on a 4K display right now. So we can imagine that if it's 72 DPI, it's probably two, three or four times larger than what it needs to be. So right now our canvas is really large. And this kind of fits what we talked about earlier, where we're now trying to paint the pixels to match the larger area that we need to deal with. So the next step though, is to essentially make sure that our drawing operations are also respecting the value because our circle is still the same size, but our canvas itself is now much larger. So the way we can do that is by using a scale property. So context.scale, device pixel ratio, and device pixel ratio. So I'm just essentially scaling everything appropriately by the width and height that we need to deal with. And so notice now that our circle is now also much, much larger than it used to be. Its positioning is a little off right now, but that's okay. We're gonna deal with that separately by the last part of what we're doing, which is now that we have a much larger image that we've drawn to squish it back down using, in this case, CSS. So canvas.style.width, saying the CSS property width on this element, is gonna be rec.width plus pixels. And similarly, canvas.style.height will be rec dot height plus pixel. And now you can see once I've done this, the canvas is appropriately sized with our circle more crisp as well. Like, and you can see that the circle now like does not have the, the jitteriness, the blurriness, the things that we want in there. It is just perfectly sized. And if you look at the code that we've added, there was nothing too fancy going on here. We essentially first got the, the overall bounding box of the canvas element itself. So we get the width, the height, everything appropriately as determined by the browser itself. Then we go ahead and scale everything up by the device pixel ratio. We scale that drawing operations appropriately by the device pixel ratio as well. And then the last thing is we set the appropriate you know, visuals physically for us to using, the, using CSS, send the width and height properties to the width and height that we now have calculated as a result of the calculations that we have right now. So that's a pretty convenient way for being able to do all of it. You just saw a very quick overview of how to take something on the canvas that was really designed for 70 DPI, a world that doesn't really exist anymore because of all the modern screens that we have to deal with, and how with about five or six lines of code, we will take the three steps that we talked about earlier, turn into something that you can now apply to every single canvas example that you create. I would highly encourage you that from now on, for every canvas related content you create, that you actually add this code as part of it. You know, whether you make it part of a library or a utility or something you just copy and paste every time, you'll never know when someone will be viewing it on a high DPI screen or high DPI monitor. So you might as well just make it easier on everybody and just give them a crisp and nice visuals along the way. So if you need any questions, please post in the forums at forum.group.com where I and others will be happy to help you out. If you like the video, like the content, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of future videos that I'll be creating. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter, Facebook, and various other places to, be, to receive bite-sized updates on web development topics and other things that I'm interested in right now. And lastly, there's also a book form of this content if you like to read things either on a Kindle device or in a paperback form, or of course, there's a free version on the website in terms of an article, but the book is pretty great. I like it. It seems like a lot of people like it based on the reviews and ratings and sales. So I highly encourage you to give it a shot if you want a more comprehensive end-to-end -end look at how to use Canvas from Noob to Ninja, which is also the title of this book. And with that, I will see you all next time.